In 2020, we definitely needed this on-screen drama. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 reality TV moments of 2020 so far. For this list, we'll be looking at the most memorable and talked about moments from 2020 reality shows and docu-series. This video is brought to you by TBS. Thanks to our friends at Lost Resort for all the drama we needed this summer. Okay, but I just want you to understand that I'm still very close with my grandmother. So for me, it's hard to hear anything negative about her. I'm angry as hell that I cannot have a relationship with my sister or my brother because since I was 20 Don't blame years grandmother. Old, no, but don't, since I don't, was- But don't blame grandmother. You're gonna know. Don't blame grandmother. You've done a hell of a lot worse to me. You wanna go there if you're gonna call out her? Every time I come back from visiting with her, all you do is ask, what did she say about me this time? Even though all she does is wish you well. Number 10, the final competition, Cheer. Until this docu-series was released in early 2020, we had no idea just how riveting cheerleading could be. Like, we have way too much heart, and we have come way too far and worked way too hard for any of us to give up. Cheer captured the attention of Netflix viewers because of the high-flying feats and seemingly dangerous world it portrayed. The whole series was leading up to the Navarro College Bulldogs cheer team's final competition at Daytona, and the nail-biting event proved to be even more anxiety-provoking than we'd imagined. When Austin fell during the performance and hurt himself, causing the routine to be paused, we were on the edge of our seats. But of course, Navarro still prevailed in the end. And our junior college national champions with a 97.8375, Navarro College! Number 9, Denise's Cheating Drama, The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Famed actress and model Denise Richards joined the primary cast of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills for season 9 and injected some added drama to the long-running reality show. You're leaving, why? I'm sure they'll fill you in. In season 10, which began airing in April 2020, the underlying issue on viewers' minds was whether Richards had had an affair with Brandi Glanville, who had previously been a major player on the show. I'm a very married woman. Richards was married at the time, and while there are reports of her having an open marriage, there's confusion about whether that was actually the case. Watching it all unfold in season 10 has been riveting, to say the least. We kind of hooked up, we hooked up, and then... Who's we? Denise and I. Like kiss? Like everything. Number 8. Tyreek's Conversation with Ruth. Queer Eye. A new season of Queer Eye was just what we needed while struggling through the global pandemic. So this is my kitchen. I think I'm moving in. It's always space. <laughs> in the fourth episode of season five, The North Philadelphia Story, we meet Tyreek, a man who was trying to process the rift that had developed between himself and the woman who he saw as a mother figure in his childhood. It wasn't that I didn't want you, I didn't love you, I always love you, I love you right now. He finally reconnects with Ruth by the end of the episode and clears up some years-old misunderstandings, making for a perfectly uplifting Queer Eye moment that we won't soon forget. I'll definitely come with it, definitely come with it. I'm, for was, sure? For sure. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. I love you. Number 7. Stassi and Bo's Engagement – Vanderpump Rules Vanderpump Rules has been in the news in 2020 primarily because of the firing of cast members Kristen Dute and Stassi Schroeder, who filed a false police report against former co-worker Faith Stowers. Before all that took place, though, they'd already filmed season 8, which featured Stassi getting engaged to her boyfriend, Bo Clark. Yeah. Hold on, I get to say yes. Yeah, oh yes. Yes. Isn't that what I'm supposed to say? <laughs> Bo played into Stassi's interests by getting down on one knee at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery due to Stassi's love of murder, crime, death, and cemeteries. Some might say it's morbid, but she thought it was romantic. I'm so happy. <laughs> love you, buddy. Love you. I love you guys too. Bye, guys. Number six, Jeff Probst gender bias speech. Survivor, winners at war. Survivor has been on the air for 20 years as of 2020, and there's been no lack of exciting moments. Joe coming back, he's been terrible in this challenge so far. Thanks, Jeff. One of the most impactful, however, happened in the finale of season 40, entitled Survivor Winners at War, which featured winners from past seasons. If I were to look back at all of the comments I have made over 20 years, I would find the exact same bias in me. Host Jeff Probst, who has been a mainstay since the very beginning, gave a speech about gender bias on 
the show, admitting that he himself had let that bias affect his thinking in earlier seasons. He expressed being open to investigating issues present on the show and hoped that Survivor would come out better for it. And I don't think I even knew I was supposed to look for it, but I'm very much aware of it now and I'm grateful that we can open up and investigate even though it comes with crisis or it comes with some hardship or it comes with some tears, whatever it is, it's out there and it's being talked about. Number 5. Kim and Courtney's Fight – Keeping Up With The Kardashians We've seen plenty of fighting over the years on Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Well, you don't care about stuff. But in the season 18 premiere, which aired at the end of March, things got physical between Kim and Courtney. Oh, I will literally f you up. The two sisters were fighting about their respective work ethics, with Courtney feeling underappreciated and as though the hard work she put in went unnoticed. Things quickly escalated, though, when Court pushed Kim to the ground, inciting her ire and resulting in a violent altercation. Luckily, their kids weren't in the room to see this behavior. Guys, stop! Number 4. The Remote Finale – RuPaul's Drag Race Luckily, many seasons of reality TV were filmed in 2019 and early 2020 and were able to air after the pandemic took over the news cycle. Next up, from her estate in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Jada Essence Hall. But some shows unfortunately had not wrapped before we entered lockdown. RuPaul's Drag Race was one of them, resulting in the season 12 finale being shot remotely, with the judges and contestants all filming from their own homes. While this could have made for a disappointing ending to the season, the creativity and ingenuity used by the final contestants made for a showdown unlike any we'd seen before, featuring music video style performances that were just as memorable as the typical runway shows. Wow, 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 wow. Now, the time has come to crown our queen. Number 3. Runaway Bride – Love is Blind <laughs> As the antidote to our pandemic blues, Netflix series Love is Blind was pretty much exactly what we needed. This show was riveting for its unique concept and the compelling characters it put forth. It doesn't matter about the age, it's gonna be us. Okay, so… While the internet loved to hate Jessica and her messy relationship with Mark, you can't get any better than the runaway bride moment from the finale that was teased throughout the whole season. I can't handle the ups just... and downs of you loving me one day and saying you want to be friends the next. At Giannina and Damien's wedding ceremony, he rejected her, causing her to run from the venue in a dramatic exit for the ages. <sighs> I'm out of here. Get me out of here. Number 2. The Dramatic Finale – The Bachelor Pretty much every season of The Bachelor boasts the most dramatic finale ever, but this one was actually a contender. You have a gem waiting for you who is madly head over heels in love with you, and God put her there for you. Though much of Peter Weber's season was notably dull, we were all waiting for the ending, which was purported to make it all worthwhile. I love you. <laughs> and the love that you've shown me is all that I've ever wanted. I never want to let you go. After much insistence from his mother, Peter finally proposed to Hannah Ann. But their engagement wasn't meant to last, and by the time after the final rose aired, they had already split up. You took away from me my first engagement. He started up a relationship with his number two pick, Madison, but that was even more short lived. Before we unveil our most dramatic number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Heidi Klum's new show, Making the Cut. The Project Runway veteran teamed up with Tim Gunn again. What is so amazing about being on Making the Cut is after every runway show, the winning look will be produced and sold immediately on Amazon, which is so amazing for these designers. Tinsley Mortimer drama, The Real Housewives of New York City. Her relationship with Scott Kluth caused rifts among the cast. I'm really happy, and I'm really happy that you're happy I'm for so me. Happy thank, so you. Wow, thank you. Wow, thank you. I'm thank you. Thank you. I've got a turkey baster. Maybe you can have to try to have a baby. <laughs> I, what does that mean? Joey's victory, The Circle. Joey Sasso took home the big prize. $100,000! The reunion, Jersey Shore. The situation was back for a cast reunion. MV3! Now it's an official party. Yeah! There's no place I'd rather be. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Did Carol Kill Her Husband? 
Tiger King. I was seeing behavior in him that just didn't make any sense. Like, he could remember things from way back when he was a kid, but he couldn't remember where he was for the last five minutes. Who would have thought that the thing that would bring the world together in a moment of cultural uncertainty and darkness was a documentary series about an over-the-top zookeeper? Tiger King was like a car wreck we couldn't look away from, and it somehow managed to cleanse our brains of the gravity of what was going on in the real world. She has this black cloud over her head of people thinking that she fed her husband to the tigers. While the show raised many questions, none captured the public's attention quite like the mystery of what happened to Carol Baskin's husband. Was he fed to the tigers? Did he actually manage to just fly off into the unknown? There's nothing at all to indicate that, that Don left his van there and got in a plane and crashed it somewhere. And why was his will so bizarre? A normal person would put upon my death, you know, first sentence, upon my disappearance. These are sadly queries that we may never have answers to. He said to be sure and get the Costa Rica truck ready because he was leaving early, early, early in the morning for Miami. And that was the last thing that he said to me. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.